make the uh, interceptions when it comes throughout to our hands. Sterling Moore and Cameron Jordan could have turned that game totally around. So you've got you've got to catch the ball when the opportunity is there to present itself. They had been doing really well uh, with turnovers. You know, this year the defense has been as, as of recently. So we're going to need them to make some plays. And um, I agree with Deuce in terms of Drew Brees. Under pressure, mm-mm, the Saints need to go to a running game and a short yardage passing game um, to beat Tampa Bay. You don't have to do all that aggression trying to play in the sombrero. You need to change your game now and go to a running game as well as a short passing game and get some help for whoever's covering Mike Evans. He's their number one target. And um, Doug Barton is kind of injured, so Tampa Bay doesn't have a lot of weapons, but what they're great at doing is winning and getting turnovers. So the Saints have got to handle the ball well, and I would not be as aggressive until there's something that allows my aggression to be enacted and to be, you know, something that I can do. But a short yardage game, start the way they play Seattle and beat Seattle. That's how I would play that game. I would take what they give me, take what they give me, and change the way, especially if Michael Thomas up, change how you utilize Brandon Cooks and hopefully Brandon Coleman and Kobe Fleener, if Thomas is out, that they can be reliable. Because now with Josh Shield being gone, you don't really have any backup tight ends and stuff. Nobody that Drew Brees would trust. So Kobe Fleener is going to be, he really has to, and Brandon Coleman, they've got to catch passes that are thrown to them because. Lately, Kobe Fleener is having key drops, you know, that hurt the team. And so we need Coleman and Fleener and Fleener to show up if Thomas is out. And I think the Saints can beat them. Tampa Bay is not no just overpowering team. They're not that. But what they're good at is they're, they're one of them gritty teams. When you go down there and play in that stadium, that's just like going, you know, playing in, in Oakland in that stadium. It's something about that stadium you know, and, and all of that, where sometimes the Saints, you know, uh, you know, have just crazy things happen. Remember that same place in 2011 when Sean Payton broke his leg when Jimmy Graham hit him, mm-hmm. you know. So strange things go on down there. Conspiracy theory, is that why Jimmy Graham was traded? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, Jameis Winston has been very good uh, for these guys as of late, but that defense of Tampa Bay has been very productive when it comes to uh, ripping the ball and getting the interceptions when they need. I think uh, when I was listening to Sean Payton, he said that uh, Tampa Bay right now is on a uh, record pace for their team as far as takeaways for the season. So that's uh, something that the Saints are going to have to watch. Uh, the professional, man, Jameis Winston, let's talk about this young kid. He and uh, Mariota, these guys were one and two when they came out of uh, uh, the draft. Looks like Jameis Winston is doing well as well as Mariota. He has his team at six and six. But they say Jameis Winston, man, he's dangerous when he's pressured. He he has uh, been on track to – uh, even outdo Tom Brady on pressures. How do you see this kid this season? Well, he's. Um, I see him probably being one of the one of the um, premier players in years to come. Uh, you know, he's been up and down this season. Uh, in recent weeks, he's been amazing, but he did have a few weeks when he was um, on. He was on the receiving end of. You know, he was throwing a lot of picks himself mm-hmm. for a few weeks there. Um, but it seems like since they're by, he's just come out as a different guy. And if he continues playing on that level, uh, yeah, he can be one of the faces of the league in the next years to come, um, right along with um, Cam Newton, you know, and, um, you know, with these all these guys that are coming up. I mean, our division, uh, I'm, I really hope um, whenever our time comes, when Drew Brees has to go, we really replace him with um, – an outstanding replacement because with Cam in our division, with Jameis in our division, with Matt Ryan in our division, uh, our whole division is going to have really, really good quarterbacks and, you know, where will we be? 
So, uh, yeah, Jameis Winston, I think, will be the, the face, one of the faces of the league um, very, very soon. Um, you yeah. know, I, I really am surprised that um, he's staying out of trouble, you know, out there out there in Florida with all the seafood around there. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I just need some he, crab legs. I just all want some crab legs, man. <laughs> <laughs> But no, man, I, I am really, really impressed with the guy as far as what he's how, how he's producing. But um, you know, Professor mentioned um, Mike Evans earlier, but I, I I didn't know he was playing football once he left Good Times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was a good one, man. That was a good one. All right, man. But yeah, Mike Evans, he's balling right now because Mike Evans has a thousand and fifty eight yards and ten touchdowns. He yeah. is really doing well. Uh Jack Kidwiz, is it Jack Quiz? Yeah, Jack Quiz Rogers, their running back, he leads the team at four hundred and twenty two yards. Uh, Jameis Winston has thrown for over three thousand one hundred and eighty yards uh for the year. So uh, they are projecting right now that uh, the way the team is really performing, that they have a 41% chance of making the playoffs and coming out of the season at 9-7. and seven. Uh, A player to note, their defensive end, Golston, he has been hobbled due to a ankle sprain. So he hasn't really practiced uh, much this week, and hopefully that will help us out a little bit. Uh, but uh, Gerald McCoy hasn't practiced a couple of days this week as well. So we'll see how things go for those guys uh, because Gerald McCoy, Ghostin, as well as that kid Noah Spence are very, very good players uh, that – our offensive line would have to contend with on Sunday. Well, I, I think right now, guys, if you can correct me if I'm not too much out of place, I believe that right now it's a matter of will. The Saints are going to have to be the ones to really impress their will upon these guys. And and I, I like the fact that if we utilize kind of the same game plan that we had with the Seahawks, more control ball, but being able to matriculate the ball down the field in a consistent manner is really one way we could be able to uh, do well against these guys. But Mark Ingram, as well as Hightower, those guys are going to have to have a significant role. And it does scare me that Josh Hill will be out because our other tight end, uh, David, he hasn't done much to really impress us. So will we have more of Brandon Coleman uh, being an integral part of the team? What do you think, Deuce? Well, I mean, I'd be real hesitant to, to say anybody like Brandon Coleman needs to be more part of the team because even though he's done better this year, he's still not Mr. Consistency. I mean, there's a reason that it's been so long for him to really develop into anything. Now, it, I just think you got to rely on the old reliables that you already have. I mean, the guys like Sneed, Steve, Thomas, Ingram. Right. I mean, they've proven – two of them have proven that they can do it for multiple years. One of them is, to me, the best rookie wide receiver, hands down. And if it wasn't for a couple of guys in Dallas, he would be the clear-cut winner of the Offensive Rookie of the Year. So, that you got to rely on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, good, good. All right, guys, uh, we're going to come pick the Saints and Tampa Bay game back up. Uh, I just want to kind of uh, pivot to what's happening with the Will Smith trial. If you guys had not heard, uh, the trial has commenced against Mr. Cardell Hayes. Uh, it's in its second day of the del- of um, questioning from the team. And um, I know Will's wife, Pierre Thomas, Deuce McAllister, they have testified. Uh, it's been pretty uh, gut-wrenching to hear some of the things that have taken place um, and how they have portrayed what happened that 
dreadful evening in New Orleans. And also, we've been dealing with uh, Joe McKnight and the loss of that young man at the hands of Mr. Gaser. Um, they finally have charged him with manslaughter. So, and, and I know his family has asked for another time to uh, have the coroner to review his body and conduct an autopsy. And Deuce, we'll check you later. I know you have to go. Thank you, man. Thanks for being on. Um, guys, I mean, we have two high-profile New Orleanians who played in the National Football League. Uh, well, Joe McKnight was a New Orleanian, but Will Smith has been here as long as he was here. He he is a part of New Orleans, uh, the fabric of New Orleans. What do you make of this, these type of crimes, the, the road rage and the shooting people? Uh, just quickly, what's your thoughts there, professional? Road rage. That's a term I despise. Um and the reason I say that is because once you give something a name like that, for, for, you give something a name, to me, it almost gives it legitimacy. Mm. It gives people an excuse. Mm. Oh, I had road rage, so I got out of the car and I shot it. You know, mm -hmm. no, that's not, no, no, that's that's murder. That's killing someone. You know, so um, I hate that terminology. I hate the use of the word. I hate that they have identified getting angry with someone while you're driving and then getting out to do something like that as road rage. That's to me, that's almost, almost like saying it's okay. It's understandable. We all do it. I mean, no, we've all been in a position where, um, somebody on the road has done something. I had it happen to me today. Someone cut in front of me after I had waited in traffic for God knows how long and you come and drive down in the other lane and you cut in front of me, and jump right in front of me in traffic, you know. While well, you know, after I have waited for ever to get to this point, you know, so that uh, coincidentally, it happened on the same bridge where Joe McKnight's situation started. Who knows that that may be how this situation got started? But I had to let it go. I can't get. I can't let it get to that point where I'm ready to get out of my car and you know and take someone's life. And I think that we need to stop giving people the opportunity to almost legitimize um, these types of actions. That's a good point. I mean, we are giving them almost like an escape clause. Yeah. 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 Good. Good point. Professor, how do you see it? Well, uh, I just think it's a sad state of affairs in this nation with all the murdering, period. And as men, white, black, Chinese, green, or red, we as men have to examine ourselves, why do we hate each other as, as men, and then we resort to violence. Um, and I know, you know, we just got a murder problem in this country. This is the most murderous nation in the world. and. It's not going to change. You know, if you turn on the news right now, it's the same thing going on. Blacks killing blacks. Whites killing blacks. Blacks killing whites. Hispanics. It's every time you turn on, the murderous statistics are the usage of guns, you know, by men. I'm not saying women don't do it because they shoot too, but men. Home invasions, shooting people. They rob the people and they still shoot them. Steal the money from somebody and they still shoot. You you have a it's a spirit of murder, and the blood of the murder is crying out in all of the cities in the world. It's everywhere now, and I don't have an answer for you in this situation at all. Um, I don't think that Will nor Joe had to lose their lives. You know at all. I tell people all the time when I ride with them. Ain't no need you blowing your home. They cut you up, leave that alone. It's not worth it. And it's not worth it. It wasn't worth it to Will, whatever happened with him and, and the other gentleman. 
It wasn't worth it to get into no arguments or 